Hi, everyone. How are you doing today? We are the Real Estate Ladies of North Atlanta, Mary Ellen Van Auken, Susan Jennings. How are you doing today, Sue? I'm doing just great, Mary Ellen. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So today we're talking about garages. Oh my goodness, this is a great topic. So especially when you're going to list your house or you're going to sell your house and just garages like taking care of them every year. So right. Sue, what, are, what specific things are we going to talk about today? Well, I've broken this podcast down into three particular segments to make it easy for everybody to remember everything. The first one is about garage storage mistakes. The second segment is things you should never store in your garage. And the third segment is things that are stealing space in your garage and really should be. These are great topics. Yeah. So some of this will overlap a little bit, but that was the, the easiest way I could break it down for everybody. All right. Fantastic. So let's go away with garage storage mistakes. Mm-hmm. So number one is the lack of storage plan. Right. So, right. <laughs> garages so, are an interesting space, should I say. Right. They really are because some people like, you know, storage certain ways, um, they really, somebody should be like a garage organizer. That's mm-hmm. a great business. I think mm-hmm. someone should yeah. get that business um, right. because I feel like it's a, it's, um, it's a very personal space, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. You're putting your cars in and some people like a lot of stuff in there. They have to put a lot of stuff or, or not. So putting a plan together. So depending on how many garages you have, whether you have one, two, three, four, five mm-hmm. garages, kind of putting that plan together on, first of all, I think you have to figure out where the car, which, which garage each car is going in because mm-hmm. some cars are bigger than others. Right. That's a, that's a good plan. And, and I know everybody here, or I've always had a refrigerator in my garage. So mm-hmm. that's definitely mm-hmm. a plan for space. And then you need like space for like your tools and um, you know, you could put in, in uh, cabinets for things you don't want anyone to see, you know, that type of stuff. And then like for your shoes, if you don't have like a mud room. So the, there's so many different, you can become so creative with the garage, can't you? Right. You can. And so I think one of the best ideas with uh, a garage is to create a storage plan and maybe think about it in terms of zones. So you have your gardening zone, you've got oh, your yeah. shoe zone, maybe you have your um, your kids' toy zone, and Sports. maybe auto auto parts like you know windshield washer fluid or jumper cables or things like that. You've got a zone for that, and maybe even a beach zone for the your your zone of things that you always take to the beach, like your folding chairs or your kids' floats, things like that. Or tailgating, right? Tailgating, mm-hmm. right? That's yeah, a very those popular folding here chairs in the South is. Um, is, uh, you know, those SEC football games or baseball Mm -hmm. games and, you know, professional, like, you know, you're going to go tailgate somewhere. That's a big thing here. So you're going to have those extra chairs and tents and things Mm -hmm. that you need for coolers. I mean, I know a lot of people have a lot of coolers and and things like that for tailgating, beach, pool, um, you know, because it's so warm here in in the South. So having right. Right. You should also store those things according to how frequently you're going to use them, too. So yes. maybe put things on a higher shelf that you don't use very often or tuck those back behind things that you use more frequently um, just so that you have things that you use frequently, like at eye level or yes. easy access to those items. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So once you kind of put that plan together and I also feel like you have, you know, like lighting is really important in, mm-hmm. in a garage too. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, putting that plan together. What's the next step? Well, we need to go through and we need to declutter. And this is something that I think you need to do at least twice a year in a garage. You need to just go in and pull everything out and start over because there's just so many things that if you get rid of them, it makes your reorganization so much easier. Yeah. So decluttering, it's just like when you're moving out, what you're, what you're doing and you're mm-hmm. looking at things that, you know, how often. And, and I think that this also causes if you got different personalities with a husband and a wife and kids on how they want their garage to look like. And, you know, I think that that also can be some conflict. So I would suggest sit down with your spouse and family and be like, Hey, this is how we're going to organize the, the, the garage. Cause you got those teenage kids that come back from baseball and soccer or practice and they just throw their bags. No, it has to be organized in a certain way. So, right. 
So I think it's a, it's a family plan. Let's do the family plan. And don't forget to clean out those uh, sports bags. Yes. I had one particular child that loved to just throw their leftover food and the remnants of whatever in the bottom of their softball bag. And, and then in, in the garage, in the you had like time. ants, right? <laughs> oh, well, it was moldy. It wasn't even the ants. It was oh, no. Like, oh. <laughs> so yeah. stinky shoes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Make sure those shoes are, you know, <laughs> always have extra, extra towels for those um, muddy shoes and everything else. So, right. Yeah. Exactly. So the other thing we don't want to do in our garage is store the wrong things in a garage. We have a lot of humidity here in Georgia. And so you don't want to keep your off season clothing in that garage. You don't I necessarily don't want anyone to do that. But well, you know. You know, people just sometimes leave stuff behind, but especially like sleeping bags and camping gear. Yeah, you don't necessarily want that in your house. But, you know, do you really want to store your sleeping bag that you're going to climb into and your nose is going to be up against um, a sleeping bag that could pen potentially turn moldy? Um, oh, yeah, that's why it has to be in the air conditioning, probably mm -hmm. like in a in a in a towel linen closet or in a, just a regular closet. Yeah. Right. Right. And, you know, things like paper products or important documents or folder uh, photos, of course, never store those in a garage as well. Yeah. Okay. That's, those are some good advice. Right. Storing the wrong items. So what do you store these things in Mary Ellen? What should you really use to store things? Should you use a cardboard box? Should you oh, yeah. use like a plastic rubber made container? Um, what what should you use that will keep the moisture down and protect your items and also keep pests out? We have a lot of creepy crawly things here in Georgia. They certainly outnumber all of us. And snakes. Have you ever had snakes in your garage? I have. Yes. <laughs> I've had birds in my garage. Well, I've had birds frogs all the in time. my garage. Birds like making nests outside the garage and then they come in. Yeah. So like snakes, you know, all those fun things like so uh, that are in your garage. So my suggestion is depending on the item, I like plastic uh, Rubbermaid containers to put things in. It's great for storage. Um, also, we store a lot of things on, we have like some cabinets. We had some old cabinets we took out of somewhere, the I guess the mm -hmm. kitchen or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we put them also in, in the garage so that you have closed space. So it's, it's kind of like you can put all your, um, you know, items for gardening or something in that, or the things that you use every week, you know, whether when you're mowing the lawn, if you mow your lawn and that kind of stuff. Um, but like sports and stuff containers is always good because no matter how you look at it, for some reason, your garage always gets dusty. I don't know why. Right. Because so if you open you the garage doors, dust comes in, the wind blows, and you're going to get some dust. So right. my suggestion is to have them in containers that basically are closed. <laughs> right. Yeah. And if you have an oversized garage, you might want to consider actually building in closets. And the closets should have open shelving, like the wire shelving is good inside those closets because it promotes ventilation. But it also, you know, when you open your garage door, the leaves aren't going to blow in and get into that uh, stuff. Plus having things behind closed doors, you know, it's a little bit of out of sight, out of mind. You don't need, need to be looking at the stuff all the time and it will stay nice and neat on the shelves. But one of the things you should do with any of these spaces, whether you've got open shelving or closed shelving, you should put storage labels on these things so that you know which bin belongs to what. And especially if you're keeping things up high that you're only using seasonally, you can just look up and see that that what that label says on that bin and you can skip over it and go to the next bin if you're looking for something in particular. Yeah, that's really smart. That's a smart, smart idea. I also mm -hmm. have um, in, in my garage, I have like a little um, dresser type thing where you can put like old shoes. Okay, because mm -hmm. like, we work in the yard or we go out in the yard and we use our old sneakers and stuff. Yes, sneakers, not tennis shoes. I'm from the North, right? So we put our <laughs> sneakers in the little holes or, right. or like your flip flops when you're like you're barefoot and you want to run outside to the mailbox or what do you want to do? So we have kind of like a little um, organized area, like right before you come in, in the house um, right. for those yucky shoes. And then when right. you come in the house, then you have for the nice shoes, you know, like your mud room and stuff. So right. that's just a, a suggestion I, I have. And of course right. it's next to the refrigerator, right? With all of the, course. all the beer and, 
and Gatorade and lemonade and waters and, and all that kind of stuff there too. Right, right. And you can even use, um, you know, pieces of furniture that you no longer need um, in those areas. I once had an old office desk that was one of those you put together yourself. I probably got it at Staples, but I was upgrading my office furniture. And so I decided to take my desk and put it in a nook in my garage. I had this little bump out area. It fit in there perfectly with my refrigerator. And yet it was great because I did have a couple drawers for smaller items. And then it had some shelves above it so I could organize things nicely on the old desk. And I didn't have to spend a lot of money on, you know, really expensive shelving. Um, but don't neglect vertical storage in your garage. So mm -hmm. if you have bicycles, bicycles and things like that, try to get those nice brackets and hang yep. them, um, in, them in you know, screw them yep. into studs, of course, and mount those bike racks up high and use your vertical space as well. Um, I think people really underutilize the idea of going, you know, vertically. You can hang ladders up there. You can hang garden hoses up high. Um, you can even install a pegboard and hang things on a pegboard. Uh, and they don't need to be down at eye level necessarily unless you're going to use them all the time. But at least it keeps things organized and it keeps things, you know, up off the floor. Yeah. And another thing I would suggest is sometimes if you buy like a new construction home, they're like, some of these builders don't like paint. They don't paint the garage and the ceiling or whatever. So make sure that that's that's a that's a tidbit that right. that's that's a big job to do is to paint the right. garage and stuff. Make sure it's painted. And if it is painted, make sure it's kind of a neutral color. You know, you yeah. don't want to go too light, but you don't want to go, you don't want black in your, in your you home. want like a tan or something that can take a little bit of dust and dirt. Is right. Or, or you know, a gray or a tan right. or something, something right. very neutral you want in your, um, and you know, if you have windows in your garage, a lot of people have windows. I do um, just right. make sure that you're, you know, cleaning those and, and, and uh, taking care of that as well. Right. So. Right. Right. I once bought a house up North and believe it or not, even in Pennsylvania, they did not drywall the garages <gasps> and they did not wrap the houses in Tyvek, which is something that mm -hmm. is just a standard down here. I mean, down here, you you generally always see a drywalled garage and you always see the houses wrapped in Tyvek. Right. And our winters were so cold up there that uh, we ended up um, insulating and drywalling that garage, even though it wasn't heated space. Yes, we went ahead and insulated it because we had finished space above the garage and it helped keep that space a little bit warmer as well and cooler in the summer. But um, yeah, so there are things that you should never store in your garage, such as hazardous items or even like lawn fertilizer, um, paint cans, propane tanks, pesticides, things like that are just, are, it gets really hot in the summer here i mean it's already been 95 and we haven't even hit the first day of summer yet no, and yes. so our garages are getting kind of toasty already yeah but um these are potentially flammable substances and they're really not safe to keep in a garage yeah yeah so i mean really just watch the ingredients that are on these things mm -hmm. that you have in your garage and store them in a cooler place air conditioned place right right and then um, the other thing that, you know, is a mistake that people often make is they fail to consider the future value of their home. And, um, you know, if it's your forever home, you might want to consider investing in customizing, you know, the cabinetry and the storage space in the garage, because it really does boost your home's value. Um, you know, we don't photograph the inside of a garage necessarily when we uh, list a home, but buyers, potential buyers always walk into the garage. And we've had, you know, some men that see these incredible workshops that have been built into the walls of the garage and they really, really like those things. That will sell a house, definitely. Right. Always, always, it's like walking in and, and opening up the fridge. You always mm -hmm. open up the garage, right? right? And if you've got a lot of stuff in there, you know, um, but if it looks like and, and nice slick floors with, you know, mm -hmm. that nice flooring and, and everything else. People love that stuff. Right, right. So remember to clean your garage as well. You know, it sounds funny to say, yeah, I'm going to go house clean my garage today. But um, it's really a necessary step because. And constantly, does... constantly brooming it. You know what I mean? Because right. like you said, your car comes in and it comes in with dirt and and leaves and everything else. And before you know it, you're, you know, you're you have to just always. That's that's one of my pet peeves is I got my little broom out and I'm always like every day, like, you know, 
not uh, every day, I, but mostly Mary Ellen, I'm the weirdo that vacuums my garage. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh my gosh. And, and a story to tell my parents. Oh my God. God bless them. They actually had carpet in their garage. They were neat freaks, right? Yeah. So they put the old carpet when they got new carpet and they put it in the garage. So they're, they're like, just like, not like, you know, put it down there, but they just had the garage in it. That's where their car would go over. Cause they didn't want any of the stuff to leak on their garage floor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So people, you know, people are different. They do different things, whether they're clean freaks or not. And, and, you know, it's, it's very interesting. I think a good, you know, there's a lot to learn about looking in someone's garage, honestly. Right. Right. Um, just stepping back a moment, we touched on a few things that you should never store in your garage. Um, there are actually nine things that I've included in on my list today for this podcast. Um, we touched on propane tanks. Don't store yes. those in your garage. Um, paint and other chemicals. Don't store those in your garage. The third thing I have on here is pantry goods. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Wow. Pantry goods. I don't know why anyone would think of that, but, you know, I mean, it if you don't have a lot of storage, but well, I people even will store my... pet food out there. Oh, and I you wouldn't really shouldn't that. store pet food in your garage. Um, nope. You know, even bird seed. Um, yep. Bird seed is an easy target for pests to get into. Oh, so okay. it's not necessarily that we're thinking about canned goods or rolls of paper towels, even though they'll absorb all the humidity and everything, and you shouldn't keep them out there. But it's just it's important to consider the shelf life of something and how it's going to be, be impacted by potential pests and, you know, the humidity and the yeah. temperature changes here. Um, the other thing, number four on my list was anything of fabric sort and that we mm -hmm. mentioned sleeping bags, but we didn't mention tents and, um, you know, anything that rodents would like to get into potentially, um, make a nice little nest. Um, anything that they would want to chew through. Uh, these things, like, of course, I said before, get moldy. Um, don't store any extra mattresses or rugs, upholstered furniture. Um, any of those things in your garage can create surprise guests. Uh oh, we don't want those surprise guests. Right, no, right. And not. number five on my list was anything that's of paper sort. Though. So that includes the cardboard boxes that you might be yeah. considering storing things in. Um, you know, anything, um, it's just critters like to chew through all that and they'll get into all your mementos that you've stored inside. Um, people will, will rotate their toys for their kids, but toys actually shouldn't be stored outside either. Um, you know, particularly plushy items, mm -hmm. baby items, these things just have a tendency. They're not designed for these conditions. Right. And so you really need to make sure that you're warding off mildew and all that once again. Yep. Number seven on my list is electronics, uh, vinyl records and film. Oh, um, yes. Yeah. You, don't want to take those extra, you know, electronics and stick them out there on a shelf. Um, number eight is antique furniture. I don't know of too many people. I did mention you put an old piece of furniture out there if you're going to use it, but you really don't want to store them because um, the environment is just bad news for right. furniture in general. Yeah. Number nine is firewood. Huh. Yeah, yeah, firewood really creates um, uh, termites, beetles, ants. They're yeah. all really attracted to firewood. And they can bury themselves inside the firewood and they can just in introduce, you know, bigger problems into your home, especially those termites here in Georgia. And yeah. um, definitely, definitely that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so firewood needs to be stored somewhere where there's good airflow and um, a place where it can stay dry so that it can burn in the future. Yeah. So um, what what items do you think are stealing space in your garage that really shouldn't be there? Oh, stealing space. Yeah. <laughs> Besides real estate signs. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, real estate signs. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. No, I think so. And I'm, I'm laughing because it's funny because, you know, we, we always have signs going in and out of the garage and, you know, we have actually I have it really organized. So it's it's like my husband made like a closet. So we have them in there. But um, anyway, so like. Um, I would say like, you know, pool stuff is, is, is bulky, you know, mm -hmm. and like chairs and, and that kind of whole thing. And we use that in the summer months. So I feel like that kind of stuff is, is a little um, bulky there in, in the garage. So right. as long as you have right. a plan for it. 
you know. Right. Well, some equipment just really isn't meant to stay out in the heat, like your tennis racket. You know, people yes. will come home and leave their tennis bag in the garage, and you really shouldn't do that. It's not good for the strings um, of your tennis bag. Plus, like I've mentioned before, you know, mildew, mildew and moldiness. But, you know, if you have extra equipment, I mentioned that softball bag of my daughter's, things like that. It's just, it takes up a lot of space. It's clutter. I know it's dirty and you don't necessarily want it in the house, but it's really not a place to store fitness equipment. Um, you know, if you're, if you need to let go of some of these things, maybe when the season's done, such as also, you know, we mentioned having uh, zones. Um, your garden tools are a big zone and we tend not yes. to get rid of worn out tools and things like that, that need to go, um, you know, the broken down power washer, pressure washer, lawn mower, um, things like that, that, you know, are just kind of sitting there in the corner taking up space. My husband was really hung up on us keeping a wheelbarrow for our, uh, <laughs> weekend landscaping, <laughs> And this poor wheelbarrow was like taking up like the better part of a bay in our garage and, and ended up being a storage bin for the hose and for rakes and for right. garden equipment, which was great, except you couldn't use the wheelbarrow then because it was storing everything. You had to dump the whole thing out to be able to use it. So just be careful what you're yeah, storing. Like tools are a big and thing in my house, like my husband with all his tools. So he actually has a tool room in the basement that's air conditioned. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he brings a lot of stuff like wheelbarrows. We have one too. When we're not using it, it kind of goes down in, in, in an area. And, and don't use your garage for storage. I mean, how many houses have we gone in and people like don't park a car in their garage? Please don't do that. <laughs> please don't do that you know give yourself a little slack when you first move in but honestly you got to get that stuff into the house right there, there's no reason to have go get a storage unit before you go put all your stuff in the garage because what do we see most of the time we see these garages and they have these you know these boxes and mm -hmm. they'll destroy. And people don't realize that until they start opening things up and going, oh, why is that moldy? Or why is that? Because it's been sitting in a garage for so many months or whatever. So right. that's my pet peeve on that. I actually had somebody tell me one time they couldn't move because they didn't know what they would do with all the stuff in their garage. Oh, my goodness. No. <laughs> that's like my pet peeve. If you can't get a car in the garage, unless you're working on a project. <laughs> and I, I can I can say that my husband's guilty and... and of that and and he's working on this big project so he has like all his tools and where his car is parked in the garage and i'm like when are you gonna put that car back in the garage and you know right. he's got to right. finish the project so you know it, it's it's so, one thing if you're working on a project and it's you know a couple of weeks right. or, you know but if you're you know yeah but but just make sure you're not storing worn out tool tools those abandoned kids toys um those broken holiday decorations um, do you people know, really, let me tell you something. Do people really put their hol holiday de decorations in the garage? Well, let me tell you something. There's a neighborhood close to where I live. And there are at least three homes in that neighborhood that still mm -hmm. have their Christmas decorations up. And it's currently June. So what? maybe they're not, they're avoiding that problem by just not taking them down. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm sorry. I just like all my decorations are in, you know, in a closet or, you know, they're just not right. not in the garage. I, I guess I think of different things in a garage than other people do because I would never imagine putting boxes of stuff in the garage. Just right. Okay. Right. Oh now, and now sports equipment. Yes. I mean, tennis balls and stuff like that. Yeah, we have all that kind of stuff in my garage, but I just not that other stuff. Yeah, but you probably have the cardboard box from Costco with your tennis balls in it, and you reach in and you take one can nope, out nope, at nope, a time. Nope, nope. I have them in a cabinet in oh, my God. like I have them in a cabinet, and they're all lined up. So whenever I need tennis balls, I just I oh yeah, boxes are like those cardboard boxes from Costco. They're like my nemesis. As soon as I get them, they go in the garbage. Out, 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 out. So. Yeah, yeah. I always have a lot of. Um, trash when i come home from costco because oh, i'm always taking all the packaging off of everything yeah i know right. that, that's, but yes nothing ever is yeah nope 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 right the plastic right. bins are the way to go right sue 
And they really are. They really are. But, you know, plastic bins, just make sure you're not getting the giant ones where everything's like getting lost on the bottom of the bin. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the more shallow bins are better because you can see to the bottom and you're always keeping them cleaned out. Yeah. And I would say like, that's what I'm saying. There needs to be somebody who just focuses on, I'm sure it's something out there. That's a great business. Garages. Oh yeah, like a garage, yeah, like you've got a closet org- organizer. You need a garage organizer, right? So. Right. So we've touched on not storing your, um, you know, unused paints and chemicals out there. We've talked about unused furniture. Maybe just list that stuff for sale. Use Facebook Marketplace and <laughs> sell it and get a few dollars yeah. out of it and get it out of there. Um, here's another one that was is always a touchy one. You get a new deck on your house. And they always give you like an extra piece of the composite board that they just built your deck with. Where do you store that? In the basement. Well, yeah, if if you can get them in your basement. But sometimes, you know, remaining ex- leftover building materials get stored in a garage. That's yeah. a big no-no because that just takes up space. You're never going to use that stuff generally, you know, maybe put Throw it in the attic if you've got extra <laughs> tile or things like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I then, would say- um, and for instance, having a lot of listings we've had in the past and stories on that of going into basements and seeing more paint cans and more stuff, um, I just suggest everybody every year, throw stuff out. Please throw stuff out. Throw stuff yeah. out. Because so we go down there and there's a whole room of stuff that people don't use. And I think they're afraid to, to like get rid of it. Right. It's kind of like if you don't use it in a year, get rid of it too. Right. But we don't do that with our like garage stuff and our paints and stuff. Right. And that's like, yeah, that's a pet peeve as a listing agent. I can tell you that. Right. And and one of the best ways to get rid of those extra cans of paint is City of Roswell, City of Alpharetta, for example, and mm-hmm. your city will also do the same. They have collection days for things like paint. And so what you do is you go on the website, you see what the rules are. Maybe you have to call in advance and tell them how many, you know, pounds of whatever you are bringing in. And you have to estimate that sometimes as to whether the paint can's half full or you know, partially full. And uh, one time I moved into a house and they'd left me all the paint, which is great, except they left me all the previous paint colors as well when they painted over with the new paint colors. So I took all the cans out and I lined them up on my, my deck actually, and I sorted through them. And I ended up having like 30 cans of paint that I had to get rid of. Oh, so yeah. there was that paint paint event coming up with the city of Alpharetta. So I called and I signed up for this. And when I told them how much paint I had, they were like, are you a paint store? I'm like, no, this is just what the previous homeowner left behind for me. Yeah. So remember when you're buying uh, a house too, or uh, (laughs) you want to look at that too, as well, because honestly, I feel like as long as you have the colors, like I keep the paint paint colors like from wherever they're from sherman williams lowe's home depot whatever and i have them in a drawer so i know Mm -hmm. because i still feel like no matter what if you have that old paint it really doesn't look the the best on the the, right and i will sort my paint colors believe it or not by what level of the house they're on whether it's second floor first floor or basement or whether it's an exterior color so if you have a handyman or somebody coming in you can just say there's all the paint. It's already sorted by floor. Just look through the second floor paint colors if that's what he's working on that day. Oh, that's awesome. What a great, yeah. great, great tip. Yeah. Great tip. Yeah. Tip of the train. So, Get rid of those paints. <laughs> and the, the last item, and I think we've touched on this a little bit already that I wanted to mention was any items that you have awaiting donation, you know, whether it's a bag for Goodwill or whatever it is, just go ahead and take it to Goodwill. Don't let it sit there and pile up. Just Right. Put it in the car, just get rid of it. Yeah. So no need to keep it stored in your garage. Yep. Yeah. So Mary Ellen, this brings us to our next segment. Okay. And the segment is? Well, we're going to talk about what neighborhood we want to highlight in our area, in the North Metro Atlanta area. Yeah. So today we're, our neighborhood highlight is the Manor Golf and Country Club, which is mm-hmm. one of my favorite places mm-hmm. in, in the Milton area, Milton Alpharetta, however you want to say it. And the interesting thing about the Manor Golf and Country Club is actually the community is in three different counties. (laughs) 
You've got Fulton, Forsyth, and Cherokee. Now, I bet you nobody, there's not a lot of places like that now, or is there, Sue? So. No, there aren't. <laughs> So you've got three different, three different counties, three different taxes, three different school districts. So depending on where you want to be. So, well, what the big attraction to the Manor Golf and Country Club is, of course, is golf. Yep. So um, it's a masterpiece designed by Tom Watson. I mean, it's a, yes. they've got a gorgeous course and I'm not a golfer. And so some of this information could change from time to time, but I do think if you have a membership there, you have the um, rights to be able to play on other courses yes. in the area uh -huh. as well that club are, court, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, related. Um, is it called club Corp? Did you say? Yeah. Club Corp. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So I guess through club Corp, you can play maybe at, you know, white columns and some of the other courses in the area as well, which is really, really nice. Um, and there are uh, other amenities in the Manor Golf and Country Club, such as the pool and the tennis facilities are amazing. They have indoor courts, which are very yeah. unusual in this area. Plus they have the outdoor courts and of course, pickleball. And um, they've also got different sized homes in uh, the Manor. Some are purely custom and, you know, cost millions of dollars and others, you know, are a little bit more of a semi-custom format and smaller homes on smaller lots that, of course, are all over a million dollars at this point, but, you know, a little bit more affordable than some of those other larger homes. And what I would say about the Manor, too, is, oh, my gosh, I've played on that Manor, manor Golf course. Oh, my gosh, it's so hilly. <laughs> so remember, here in Georgia... Everything. These golf courses are not flat like other places in the around the around the country, um, but they're very hilly. So um, you're going to see some spectacular homes up on hills and in in places. So you're going to see a lot of that kind of stuff. The feel is it is a gated community, so mm -hmm. you do need uh, to get in through a gate, and it is very strict about how you get into the property to, mm -hmm. you know, into the neighborhood as well. Um, so, which is really great for safety. And you, like you said, you have all different price points and houses that are, you know, maybe 4,000 square feet up to 20,000 square feet and garages of three cars to eight garages. So you're going to see all different things there. What I do like about um, the manor too, is that a lot of the community does have some nice property. Mm -hmm. um, there are sections that have smaller lots, but most of them have, and they're really, um, really nice because you still see all the trees and the rolling hills and stuff. You're not, it's not a clear cut neighborhood when they come in and they cut all the trees and then, right. all, you know, so I, I really do like it because um, it just shows um, just the community just has a really nice feel to it when you go inside. It, it. does. It's a beautiful community. And, you know, the, the view out the back of a lot of these homes is really spectacular of the golf course. It's so lush and green and nicely landscaped and it does have rolling hills. It's really, really pretty. Yeah. Very, it's pretty. a very big piece of property. So, mm -hmm. um, so if you're looking for a nice gated community in um, the Milton slash Alpharetta with three different counties. So depending <laughs> on the county you want to be in, whether it's Fulton, <laughs> Forsyth or Cherokee, you can um, get a great house there in the manor. So anything else you wanted to add about the manor? No, just okay. if you'd like to see anything uh, in the manor or learn a little bit more about it and think about living there, just give us a call at the Mary Ellen Van Auken team. Perfect. Fantastic. So the next segment we're going to talk about today is what we love about North Atlanta. So today, Sue, what do we really love about North Atlanta today that we're well, going to talk about? Atlanta in general is a foodie town. There are so many fantastic restaurants here. There's, mm -hmm. you know, at one point, my husband and I set a goal of trying a new restaurant every single month. And you, the, it's endless. It's endless because Atlanta's really a foodie town. It really right. is. So what's your favorite restaurant, Mary Ellen? Oh, you know, there are no favorite restaurants. <laughs> I have to say, but, you know, one of our go-to restaurants, because it's close to where, actually close to the Manor Golf and Country Club, is Casa Nuevo. And what it is, is a nice Italian restaurant. It's been there for 28 years. They have a, a wine shop right next to it, the Cork and Glass. So those are, those are my go-to because we're close to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Now, we can go to so many different restaurants um, out in the North Atlanta area that, that, 
we've been to in the past. And I know Sue has a whole list for us. So <laughs> which ones are we going to talk about today? Well, <laughs> we're going to talk about Rays on the River. Yes, and that's a great Capital one. Grill, which Capital Grill is actually uh, a chain. They're in other cities as well. Mm -hmm. Bones is my favorite all-time steakhouse in Buckhead. Nice. Um, Desta Ethiopian Kitchen is just really unique. Um, Buttermilk Kitchen is a great place for yes. breakfast. And Postino in Buckhead is right next to one of my other favorites, Howl's in Buckhead. And I actually had never been to Howl's until um, we, Mary Ellen and I recently took a class with uh, Leslie Peters, who is... Um, the wife of Andy Peters, and they, they're the owners of Georgia Legacy Group that own three of the Keller Williams offices in yeah. North Atlanta. And she mentioned in her presentation to us that day how much she liked Hal's. So I went home to my husband and said, we're going to go to Hal's. We're going to go try Hal's. And we had a fantastic meal. And Hal's is like Whoa. this hidden gem that's it's actually next to Postino's. But it's been there like 29 years and has this a incredible ambiance and music and just the, the wait staff was amazing. The food was amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, we're really touching Buckhead there. So there's just so many great restaurants in Buckhead, but there's also a lot in North Atlanta, but today we're just focusing on those Buckhead um, restaurants <laughs> that are yummy and really good. And, and like I said, Capitol Grill, you're never going to, wherever you go across the country, you're it's even though it's franchised, you're never going to get a bad meal. <laughs> So I, I do really like Capital Grill and the service is amazing too there yeah. as well. So uh, anything else you want to add about some of those restaurants, any of your favorite dishes or anything? What did you have yeah. at Howell's? Oh, the filet. Of course. <laughs> I'm a filet girl. <laughs> We're suckers for good filets. I mean, I love filet. Filet is one of my favorites. And, and, and I just think it's amazing how many different restaurants are around and also we're seeing so much more culture coming into the restaurants in the Atlanta area. Um, everyone's got a spin on, you know, a different culture, which is so amazing too as well. So I think we're getting up there in the, in the foodie. So thank you for listening to another of real estate ladies of North Atlanta. Sue, thank you for all the great information about, uh, garages. So we were talking about <laughs> garages today and the Mont Manor Golf and Country Club in the Milton Alpharetta area and some great restaurants in the Buckhead area that we love. So anyway, thanks for, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.